Inclusion is more than performance, especially in your marketing. Hi, I'm DJ from Rainbow Dragon Digital. In today's video, I'm going to talk about um, how uh, making sure that you're inclusive is about a lot more than putting people, putting a diverse group of people in your ads. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, please do. It will help me out loads. And if you click the little bell, you'll be notified when I release new videos. So I wanted to talk today about uh, inclusion and diversity. And I think that inclusion and diversity really uh, is often a thing that starts in marketing for a lot of businesses. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm not saying that's the place it should start. And I almost certainly think it's the place that it should not start, um, but it does. And a lot of a lot of companies think that it's really important to look diverse and look inclusive and put uh, the women, the black people, the LGBTQIA plus people, um, the trans people in the in the foreground of their marketing as a way to demonstrate how they're an inclusive and diverse organization. I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong. Um, I think there are moments when you should you should be shouting from the rooftops and demonstrating to the rest of your industry that you are a company that is doing that. I think that's I think that's really important a lot of the time. But it is not it is not the place to stop. It's a place to start at the very least, but I don't think it's even the place to start. I think it's a place in the middle somewhere and it's definitely definitely not where you should stop. And the um, the problem is that I think once some organizations uh, get get that recognition as being a diverse and inclusive brand, they feel like their work is done. They don't really need to work that much harder on that, and um, and they forget to check to check whether there are unconscious bias in their organization and whether there is things happening that they're not even fully aware of because they're not checking for it. So I want to give an example here. The reason that I'm doing this video is that there is an ex example um, where a friend of mine who is a marketing manager in this organization and the industry is very male dominated and um, and the, the company is very male dominated. There are few women in the office and they wanted to uh, release a marketing campaign. The marketing campaign said, got the horn. Right, the mark. It had to do with with horns or something like like you know blasting no, those kind of horns. Um, so so got the horn was the phrase, and it's funny, it's cheeky without being too offensive, right? And even my friend who is a woman, she thought, yeah, it's not that offensive. That's great. That's kind of funny. But there were other women in the office who said it felt a little non inclusive because got the horn kind of was about getting an erection, you know? And and me personally, I didn't I didn't think that. And my friend didn't think that. She was like, can't like women can get the horn as well, right? Like it's not that non-inclusive. Um but then she told me that she kind of looked it up and and had a little uh look at the the meaning behind this phrase and it it does come from that that origin of getting an erection. Whether or not that language has now changed, whether the meaning of that language has now changed, is perhaps up for debate. But the fact that it's up for debate, the fact that there were women uh, in in the organization willing to stand up and say that that felt non-inclusive should have been a signal. Unfortunately, the management didn't agree. The management went ahead and used the line. To me, that was a management mis misstep. If your if your own uh, employees are telling you are are willing to stand up and say that this feels non inclusive, and for you to not listen to that and not hear that um, makes. M if I was an employee at that company, even if I wasn't one of those women, if I was just another employee, I'd be like, they're not really listening to us, are they? They don't. They don't actually. They're not actually hearing what they have to say. Even put aside the management misstep of, of, of the managing the employees' uh, expectations and uh, comfort in the business, 
um, or, or belief in the business. Putting that aside, the fact that there were some women in the organization who felt like this was not inclusive will mean that there are women in this industry who feel it's not inclusive. So by choosing to use the line anyway, they're, ta- they're taking a, a conscious step now because they have brought this up. This is a conscious step to ignore the fact that women in a male-dominated dominated industry might not feel included by this marketing campaign. So to me, that's, that's the biggest misstep you could make in inclusivity, where you are the one who is in the position of privilege of dominating the industry, and you've taken a conscious step to ignore the fact that the people who are being excluded in this industry are feeling excluded by your campaign. So this is this is where no matter how many women they put in their ad, if it says got the horn above it, it it's going to feel uncomfortable to some of the women. And if you don't care about that because there's not enough women to care about, then I'm sorry to say it, you're part of the problem. That's the bottom line of it, really. If you're if you're willing to not care that you're not being inclusive because there's not enough people in your industry that are going to give you enough money, then you do not claim to be a business that is prioritizing diversity and inclusion because that's that's where it is. If you gonna if you're gonna put in diversity and inclusion as a part of your business value system, then you need to, at the management level, at the marketing level, at every level, be listening to the people who are being excluded and hear what they have to say and make changes to make them feel more included.